Linear graphs, table of values. All right, what if one day your teacher came up to you and said, give me all of the values for x and y that work for y equals negative 2x plus 7. All of them. And you sit there and you say, well, OK. I wonder how many could there be. Let's see here, x equals 0. Uh, da, 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 da. You get y equals 7. All right, now let's try x equals 1. All right, math, math, math. You get y equals 5, x equals 2, y equals 3, x equals 3, y equals 1. And it keeps going like this. x equals 4, y equals negative 1. Then you've got to try x equals 5, and so on and so on. And then there's the negative x's, negative 1, negative 2, and all of these also have answers. And then we almost forgot about what if x was a fraction. So we've got to deal with all the fraction stuff as well. No matter how pretty they are or how ugly of a result, all of these are answers to x and y for this equation. So basically, this is impossible. And we have to ask ourselves a question, well, what do we do? How are we going to get the list of all the answers to this equation, y equals negative 2x plus 7, without taking forever? Fortunately, the answer lies on the coordinate plane, believe it or not. All of those pairs of numbers that you saw are actually ordered pairs on the coordinate plane. The x being the x coordinate and the y answer being the y coordinate. The even better news is that when you graph all of these dots, they're going to make a straight line because we are studying this in a topic called linear algebra. And right there, you can even tell what word comes out of linear. No, not ear. Look before that. Near. Oh, great. It's the computer. By the way, everybody, in case you didn't know, my computer really hates me. And what my computer meant to say was that, obviously, the word in this is line. And my computer would really like to mind his own business, right? Fine, fine. But I'm watching you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just keep watching. So anyway, what you see in front of you is a table of values, what's sometimes called a t-chart. And what we're doing right now is we're taking some of those values from before, and we're filling in the values for x, as you can see, you get 7. So the first order pair is 0, 7, boom, it is a dot on the coordinate plane. As you can see, we're going to keep going and find some of those other values as well. There's x equals 2, and that 2, 3 was also a dot on the coordinate plane. And we're going to keep finding just two more values. That should be enough to convince you that we absolutely will get a straight line when we end up graphing these points. The good part is it really does not even matter which x's we choose. That's why x is called the independent variable. We have the freedom to choose whatever x we want. However, the y variable is called the dependent variable because it depends on what you chose for x as far as what the result is for y. Now, those four ordered pair locations represent just four of the answers that we got from earlier in this video. However, if you get out a ruler and connect them all with a straight line, you are now representing the trillions and trillions of answers that possibly exist. Any point on that blue line is a solution to this equation. So basically, in review, all you need is about four points to convince yourself you got the unique, perfect straight line. And then anybody who wants to know an answer, they just have to match the coordinates on that blue line and those two numbers. So you don't have to stand there and sit there forever to write all of the answers down. They're all represented on that blue line, the table of values. All right, let's try one more problem. Uh, negative x plus 2y equals 6. I kind of like the y to be by itself on one side of the equal sign. And you'll find out a little bit later on why it's good to have isolated y. So I'm going to pull a little bit of algebra on you here to rewrite this equation and make my computations a little bit easier. Here we go. I'd rather work with y equals 1 half x plus 3, because if I just pick an x, my independent variable, I plug it into the equation, do the math, and whatever math I end up with is the y answer. And this first one is a perfect example. 0, put it in for x, you get 3. I love using 0 as an x, and I would highly recommend it as one of the first numbers you choose when you're trying to fill in your table of values. 
All right, let's try x equals 2. The reason I choose 2 is because there's a little trick here, because x is connected to a fraction in this problem. You can avoid fraction answers if you choose multiples of the denominator. Little trick, keep it. This little trick even works for negative multiples of the denominator. So let's be daring here. Let's try uh, negative 6. Negative 6 comma 0. And I'm feeling confident here, so let's try one that isn't a multiple of the denominator. Let's try x equals 1. And clearly, since I am totally on a roll here, x is 1, y is 3 halves. Run. So now I... Um, excuse me? Run. What's wrong? 3 halves. Um, no. 1 half times 1 plus 3 is 3 halves. So. In fact, you'll see that my four dots will be on the same line, so whatever you think is wrong won't be, so just sit back and watch Mr. Computer. And here we go. There's 0, 3. There is 2, 4. There is my negative 6, 0. So there is my blue line. In fact, watch and learn, computer. Here is dot number 4. In fact, why don't you put my last dot on the blue line, Mr. Computer, 1, 3 halves, so you can see that I was right the whole time. Go ahead. Should be 3 and a half. Ha, ha, ha. Um, I, I, I gotta go. Ha, ha, ha.